Welcome back to this course on using Git for version control. So, so far, what we have done is we have created a project. We have created a file in our project and uh, made an initial commit, um, which can now be tracked from this point onwards. Now, we haven't still shown how to track changes between different versions of the same file. And that is what we would uh, we will look at how to do next. Okay. So we so far have this file mars.mars.txt in our planets folder and it so far contains just one line. Okay. So just like in a real project, um, real world project where you would uh, have multiple changes. So let's say this is one line in your thesis document and you may want to have more paragraphs and lines and more content in your file. So let's that's what we are going to do next. I'm going to just add another line and in this case uh, I'm going to say the two moons may be a problem for Wolfman. Okay, um, having said that I'm going to save my changes and quit. Okay, so let's cat the file and indeed we can see that uh, there have been there has been an additional line added to the original file so earlier it just contained that one line the top line now we just added this new line and this can be verified by using a graphical editor such as notepad plus uh, plus the default notepad uh, will not be able to uh, distinguish between the lines as we know that the windows line break or the carriage return uh, line endings is different from how git handles it internally so we will need something a little bit more sophisticated than the default notepad application that comes with windows but for example by using an application such as i'm here using notepad plus plus but any other text editor perhaps like sublime text or other um, sophisticated text editors may work so i'm going to open this master text and you can indeed see that there are these two lines so okay so that is uh, another way to see these changes graphically uh, in your environment. Um, I recommend not use the basic notepad if you are in if you are on Windows, but use uh, an advanced, uh, a little bit more sophisticated text editor than that. Okay, or you can use the Nano um, or Vim uh, text editors uh, or any other suitable text editor which is comfortable for you. All right. So that's about uh, making the changes. So we have now added um, a new line to the file. So let's use our immediate next command is to check the status of the repository. So git status is going to say that, aha, uh -huh, the file.mars.txt has actually been modified. So it's very smart and it detects that, look, the file mars.txt has now been modified, uh, but it is not yet staged for commit. So we're going to talk about how to stage for commit and the staging area and how Git's workflow internally is going to be through a visual representation. But before we come to that, we'll understand that the file has been modified. So that's the most important takeaway from this git status command that we just ran, okay? All right, uh, and uh, it says that to add uh, to the repository, you have to use git add command or uh, you can do a direct commit by using git commit dash a. So uh, before we do that, I'm going to first sh uh, show how to know the differences between the modified file master.txt and the original file which the repository understands. So we are committed some things uh, to the repository and then subsequently we modified it. So how can we view the differences between what is in the repository to what is in our working directory? So the notepad plus plus file shows what is in the working directory it's got two lines okay all right uh, but the repository contains only that we know this because we have been working on it very recently but suppose you had taken a break you were working on a big c plus plus file you wrote like 20 changes to it made a commit and then you came back and then you did another 20 um, and then you took a uh, coffee break and then you came back and you wanted to see what change okay so there is a very useful command which does exactly this task i'm going to clear the screen for now and i'm going to run this next command called git diff that's basically to show the differences between the repository version and the version in our current working directory so git diff says aha git diff is like a short form for diffing between two different versions by default 
uh, it compares two versions A and B of the same uh, file master text. So the version A corresponds to what is in the repository, what has been already committed in the repository. And the version B uh, corresponds to what is in the working directory currently. And it says that, look, there's some changes being added. Okay, you, this is, if you're familiar with Unix um, uh, patch format, so that's the patch command. Okay, uh, then the diffs produced by git correspond to the patch uh, format. But if you do not know too much about this, okay, um, for example, the diff command, so you may have a uh, file um, or a binary program called diff. This is like a Unix diff utility, okay? Uh, and diff produces this standard uh, format called patch. But the most important thing to understand here is one line has been changed and that is indicated by this plus symbol right at the beginning of this line. And um, the diffs produced by git are Unix style diffs which are suitable for the patch command. But you may ignore all this and just understand that they are line oriented diffs. That means that even if something minute had changed in that line, it marks that entire line has changed. So that's, that's an important thing to understand. Okay? Basically, um, that's that. And it says that um, a new line has now been added. That's the diff command. So it's very helpful to do this. Um, all right. So we have now made our change. We have looked at the status. We have understood what the difference is. And let's commit into the repository. So the command to commit it, to refresh the memory, is git commit with a minus m. Okay. Uh, and you can say add concerns about effects of Mars moons on Wolfman. So, so the commit message needs to be as clear as possible. So in this particular case, what our commit message is saying is there has been some discussion of Mars moons and its effects on Wolfman. So that's what the commit message says. It's helpful to have such clear commit messages to describe the changes in your project file. And I cannot emphasize this anymore. Right? This is so important. It's very important that you get the commit message right so that this can be searched later on. So you can search this commit message and that commit message is going to immediately tell you what has happened. Okay? Now if I run this command, aha, uh -huh, it says changes not staged for commit. Modified master text, no changes added to commit. Now, why did this happen? Okay, so let's think about it for a minute. And then we are going to go into an important concept of Git's workflow. Okay, so if I scroll back my terminal window, I can see that no changes have been added to commit, even though the file master text has been modified as, has been marked as modified. It says that no changes have been added to commit and you have to use git add for adding the changes or you can directly use git commit dash a. Okay, so I did not do that. I in fact just supplied a commit message here, but I did not tell that that has to be particularly added to the repository. And that brings about an important uh, concept in Git, Git's workflow, which we will take a look at our browser window shortly, but let's obey uh, Git's suggestions. Okay, for now to add the change to the uh, repository. So I'm going to say git add then marsh.txt. Okay, I use tab completion for completing the file name here. And now let me use the up arrow key to find out that latest uh, uh, commit message that I just typed on the terminal to avoid repeating uh, the typing process. And now I hit the return key and it now says, aha, look, one file's changed. In the original time we made the git commit, it says one file was created. Now it's intelligent enough to check that one file is changed. And it gives you a short commit message and it gives you a commit SHA. Instead of the 40 character commit SHA, the first seven characters is probably sufficient to uniquely determine um, the individual commits. Unless it's a very large scale project like the Linux kernel or something really large, the first seven or eight characters of your commit SHA is sufficient to identify each commit uniquely. Out of that 40 character alphanumeric code, 6 or 7 is more than enough. And it says I'm on branch master and it echoes back the commit message that we just typed. And it says one file changed, one insertion. One insertion here means one line has been inserted and that's a plus. That means it's uh, an addition to the file. 
okay right now we have we went through this process now let's do the git log um to show what exactly happened so it says that okay and it shows as you remember in the reverse chronological order okay so that means that you have the original uh, commit coming later down the list and the latest commits at the top of the list so that's my latest commit show that's the full commit and gives the author okay it's the same person committing and the date okay and um, uh, date and time and the full commit message okay that's the commit log and now git status should come back clean so let's try that now yep it comes back clean okay so this is the process so you make a change to your project file okay then you add it to the repository and then you commit it that is how git's workflow is it's a three stage workflow and now i want you to, i want to take you back into the browser window into the software carpentries lesson okay and now let's scroll down here if you keep scrolling down um okay we can probably see uh, this picture we can, you should be able to see this picture which clearly illustrates how git's workflow is so you have a file in your working directory this is your hard drive and you're working on this file uh, and you're making changes to it let's say this new line was added now that's your working directory and that's controlled entirely by you now everything in this shaded rectangular box around the rectangle here is under git's control so everything outside this box is under your control the user's control and everything inside the rectangular box is under git control okay so let's go through this workflow so you made some changes here the next thing that you got to do is to add it to something called as a staging area so this is an intermediate place where you put your changes into so git will need the staging area to be populated before it can be pushed onto the repository let's say these cylinders here these small disks here represent um let's say unique set of changes so you have one unique set of changes here followed by another one followed by another one and the cylinder keeps going growing so you build stuff onto the top okay of the cylinder okay the workflow is therefore git add to put this uh, changes into the staging area and then using git commit command that takes the everything in the staging area and puts it right onto the top of this repository and that is why how it's illustrated that file with all these changes finally goes onto the top of this repository right and to the head of this repository let's introduce that keyword head right now okay and that is how uh, it is to be done so to illustrate this concept let's go back to the terminal again and now i'm going to clear my screen and i'm going to add more content to my master.txt file okay now i'm going to say let's say uh, i'm going to add a new statement about the mummy in this theme of uh, space exploration and mummies and wolfman that we are following here so i'm going to talk something about humidity and how the mummy is going to enjoy the weather okay right so let's go through that workflow again i'm going to um save this file quit okay and now if i cat master.txt clearly i can see the third line that was just added okay uh let's practice this command git if okay now it says okay i'm going to diff between the um, version a and version b of the same file master.txt okay and version a is the one in the repository and version b is the one in the working directory and clearly the repository already contains these two lines for that file for this file under consideration but the third line is now added and that comes back as a plus with the color code right so clearly now we understand so the next thing to do is to add this mars.txt into the staging area okay that means it's now added to the staging area okay but the dip command by default compares the repository version a is the repository version and b is the current working directory so if i go back into the browser window into the schematic again you can see that 
the git diff command compares this version the one at the top of the repository to the working directory by skipping this intermediate area but the git add command has pushed all these changes into the staging area and therefore the working directory doesn't have any changes with respect to the um, with respect to the repository the changes are now in the staging area and that is what i want to demonstrate next by showing the git diff command now does not give you any difference that means that all the differences are now moved on to the staging area and therefore by default the git diff command can only show the difference between the repository and the working directory and therefore it does not show it comes up as having no differences so git diff now doesn't give any differences but if you really want to see this difference that this line has been added after executing the add command how can we get the difference so let's say you took a lunch break at this point after adding it but then you came back and you want to review the changes let's clear the screen and now you're back after a lunch break how can you still see the difference there is an option that you can pass to the diff command and that is to say dash dash staged so show me the difference between the staged version and the version at the top of the repository with this command git is going to show me the difference between the latest committed version in the repository and the version that is ready to be committed or the staged version so that command when executed will give you the expected uh, output that this line has now been recently added okay and now let's uh, commit that okay so it's already in the staging area now i can just commit with a minus m flag okay so uh, if i don't do this okay let's say i want to show you a different way to um, type your commit messages you could just execute git commit by itself and that by default will open up the text editor that has been configured so this is the first time we are going to use the core dot text editor configuration that we initially configured git with and if you if you like me have also configured nano as your text editor it should open up nano if you have configured some other text editor that particular text editor might be open for you and waiting for your attention to type your commit messages and you can put in comments by using the hash character or the pound key on your keyboard uh, and anything which doesn't start with the hash will be taken as the commit message okay so let's uh, commit and type the commit message here so i'm going to say discuss concerns about mars cons climate for the mummy okay so earlier uh, our comment message was about the mars climate for wolfman now how it works for the mummy okay so this is uh, yet another way of typing commit messages okay so control o and by default uh, this sh shall be the file name so look at the bottom of the screen and that should say dot git slash with the capital uh, with all the uh, characters in capital commit underscore edit message please do not change the name of the file otherwise your commit message will be corrupted so this is the default uh, file name so you should retain this file name i'm going to enter and it says wrote eight lines and eight lines are those including this hash characters okay which are going to be uh, just treated as comments and now i'm going to exit out of it so that's just yet another way of making a commit um, with a commit message you could have done the same thing by using git commit dash m uh, and then that um, the commit message to be done so i have just shown you an alternative way of typing in your commit messages this alternate way using the text editor will be helpful if you have a longer commit message to type maybe you made a bunch of changes and then you have to let's say point number 1 2 3 4 four different changes have been made in a commit but they are all four pertain to one master topic let's say there is one common theme to all these four changes then you would just use git commit open up the editor start typing a heading which describes the, the thematic change as a single header message 
follow it by the blank line and then type in all those one two three four lines of different changes and little changes that you made to that single thematic change so that is where the git commit as a standalone will help as a typical if you uh, typical use you would rather use the git commit dash m followed by your commit message in a uh, double quoted string okay so these are just two alternate ways of typing your commit messages okay and now it says that one file changed and there has been one insertion now we know exactly what the insertion has been it's about that third line okay now if i do git status it's going to come back clean okay okay and now if i clear the screen and say git log three commits are present okay and that is very very helpful okay so you can now see exactly how the workflow is so you make a change in your working directory add the change to the staging area and then make a commit with a commit message to the top of the repository that is how um, you can uh, work in your git workflow now when you start working on a project for months and months on end let's say um, you have like thousand commits git log is going to give you a huge list of changes as a page in a file right now instead of that you could use git log with a limiting number here so if i just want the last commit if i want to see the details of the last commit who made the change what time did they make it and what's the commit sha and what the commit message is if i just want the last one i could just use a dash n format in this particular case if i just want the last one i just use git log dash one and it gives me only the last commit that has been made so this way you could limit the number of commit messages that show up on the screen okay if i want the last two same thing git log dash two will give me the last two the latest two changes or latest two commits okay so that's one thing to remember and you can uh, there is another helpful um, way of seeing the commit messages and that is to pass the dash dash one line option to the log and that will instead of the 40 character sha it will shorten the sha to the first six or seven characters because typically the first six or seven characters is sufficient um, to uniquely identify the comments and then it's going to give you a list of changes in a reverse chronological order uh, and it will give you a single line description of those changes um, with uh, saying that the head of the repository is currently sitting here a head of the repository is now pointing to the master branch and that commit talks about how the climate affects the mummy okay uh, so that is now let's um, look at another important concept and that is about directories okay so if git does not track directories by the by themselves it needs to have some files present in the directory in order to be tracked so if i make a directory um call it um, empty till okay let's look at a list um, ls command and it says that there is an empty dir there now if i look at ls dash l long listing format it says that the empty dir does has zero bytes in it that means there's nothing there now git status will not detect that there has been a change it just says that okay the working directory is just clean so it cannot detect an empty directory okay if you absolutely um have to track something in it you have to put some files inside the directory okay that is how um, one needs to be done um, uh, one needs to work with the directory so you it git cannot track empty directories you need to have some uh, non empty file in it to be to be able to be tracked okay so if i go into the empty directory uh, and then if I now s simulate or let's add um, a file called uh, non-empty file inside this directory. This is a non-empty file. And then write that file out and exit. Okay. Now if I um, go back into my planets directory. Oh, and an important thing, all the git commands need to be run from the root of the repository. In this particular case, the root of the repository where we initialized the git directory 
the dot git folder is in the planet's directory so git init was executed from the root of the repository and that is where typically you would run all the git commands okay. now if i ask for git status it will say that ha look an empty directory is now present empty uh, or a new directory is now present which contains some files so if i add that to the repository then i can start tracking all the ch all the things in the empty directory well the name is no longer appropriate because now it's not empty anymore but the idea you get the idea so just an empty directory cannot be tracked anymore let's go back to this directory called empty dir and just um, list all the things so it's file called non empty file again extensions are not required for files in unix it's really not mandatory so if i remove this file called non empty file clear the screen and go back to my root of the repository and now if i ask for git status it says working directory is clean and that demonstrates to you that despite the fact that an empty directory is present git will not offer to track git tracks files and folders and not merely empty directories okay so the key points from this lesson um are this lesson was broken into two chunks and this is the second part of the lesson but i am summarizing the key points here git status shows the current status of the repository and git add commits it to the work commits it to the staging area and followed by git commit will push the changes from the staging area to the top of the repository okay and finally write commit messages that accurately describes your changes that is to save yourself some pain in the future so with that i think we come to the end of this section i encourage you before i stop the video i want you i want to quickly point out to you the exercises um at the end of this um at the end of this um, chapter so let's see that so please try to follow the exercises uh, here and try to answer these questions the solutions are available um in the same place so i encourage you to um after completing this video uh, go to the lesson number 4 and practice these exercises uh, given in the uh, given in the software carpentry's lesson okay so that's it so see you in the next video